Welcome back to the video, you guys. I wanted to show you a quick update before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, which is gonna be a good one, by the way. But I wanted to show you an update of the office slash podcast studio. Um, <laughs> the last time you saw this room, it was pretty bare and it's still not completely done yet. I give it like a good 80 to 85% done. But check this out. This is kind of filming slash individual podcast location number one. So this is mostly for if I'm doing like individual reels or something, I can just sit here. And then we have this kind of nice like corner area for some dimension, my desk, bunch of random crap on the desk. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would obviously I would move these things. And then this is kind of location number two. This is when I have a podcast with a guest. So actually what you can do is head to the Tula cast on um, Apple or Spotify or whatever. And we did our first podcast here with Jack Driscoll. Really cool guy, really good episode. Jack, I'll just give you a quick rundown. Jack is a hybrid athlete. In this month alone, he's literally driving across the country and competing in a new fitness event every single week. So we did a powerlifting meet one week. The next week he did kind of like a, not CrossFit, but like a functional fitness competition. And then he did a bodybuilding show. He's a, a pro natural bodybuilder. He competed here in Phoenix. And then next weekend, or I guess this weekend, he's doing the Coeur d'Alene, uh, the Coeur d'Alene Ironman in Idaho. So he's doing like, I mean, it's literally insane, right? Doing all those in, this month. And I actually did a podcast with him, so you should check it out. But yeah, this is kind of like the location where we're gonna do guest podcasts. I'm gonna sit here, my guest is gonna sit there. We got these nice panels. Um, but this is when I need you guys to help because I don't know what else to do in here. <laughs> I think I need like cool lights, maybe like colored lights or something. I had this thought of putting like a samurai sword right here. <laughs> Cause I don't know, I think that'd be cool. Uh, I just don't really know what I'm doing. So drop in the comments below if you have any ideas or like, I don't know, inspiration, maybe someone I should look at their studio that you know has a really cool studio or something, but we're getting there. Um, this is all soundproofing, so like you can hear it in here, it's getting pretty good. And that's that. We're gonna create the dopest podcast studio ever and uh, get some really good guests on here in the next month, so cannot wait. Cool, okay. So yeah, we're getting ready for the gym now. I did wanna announce a really cool thing going on with Tua. So um, if you guys follow Instagram, we were looking for a new hybrid coach to hire. This is a very big deal. And honestly, I'm like the world's pickiest person. So <laughs> you can ask Maddie. But yeah, it's like hard for me to hire someone because they have to be near perfect. And um, I'm happy to say though, we did hire our new hybrid slash kind of endurance specialization coach for Tua. Uh, this is the first Tua coach of its kind. The person is hired. I do believe he's the right man for the job and he's pretty dang near perfect. So I'm not gonna tell you who it is yet. Uh, the announcement is gonna come in less than two weeks, probably like a week and a half. So follow the Instagram, follow the Tua page on Instagram, all that good stuff. You're gonna find out all the details there. Until then, we're gonna slowly roll out this exciting information. I, I'm, I'm truly excited because the last few months, like we've just been expanding so much and a lot of the people applying for coaching have an interest in hybrid training. You know, they wanna like bodybuild, but they also wanna get better at running and kind of like be an all around athlete. And it's like, don't get me wrong, me and Devin can do that, but me and Devin are definitely, our specializations are more um, hypertrophy and, and I would say even like strength training specifically for me. I'm not as good at a running coach as other people are, right? But now we're gonna have that into a in-home. We're gonna have that perfect coach for people like that. Um, lifestyle, what, maybe even you're like a, a runner yourself, you wanna race, you wanna do um, ultras or marathons or whatever. We're gonna be able to take care of you now. And I'm so excited for it. So stay tuned for that. We're getting ready for the gym though. We're actually going to a new gym. So stay tuned because it's gonna be a really cool gym. Um, it's called Pro Physiques. Pro Physique, Pro Physiques, something like that. Plural, I don't know. Plural, Pro Physiques here in the Phoenix area. And um, apparently it's a pretty good bodybuilding gym. We're meeting up with Josh. I'll see you there, that's all. Also, prickly pear, flight, and endo pump. Pretty good, it's live. Check it out, link in the description. Let's get it. Okay, before we go, this is important. This is the newest member of the family. This is Rooney, everyone. He is our now 10 week old 
sheep -a doodle and he's awesome. And uh, him and Daisy are becoming friends, but he's he wants to play with mom right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, we got him two weeks ago and we haven't put him on the channel yet. So everyone meet Rooney. He's gonna be part of the gang for a while. Um, hey Daisy, come here. You're gonna Daisy. be the running dog once you decide Yeah. <laughs> so this is our fam, fam picture. Four of us. <laughs> Daisy's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, we're a dog fam. Everyone's like, why aren't you having kids? I'm like, we just got a puppy. We needed a second dog first. Obviously. And Daisy wants a treat. <laughs> <All right. laughs> All right, boys, so it is leg day. And as men's physique athletes, it's just a throwaway day that we do to not get hate on the internet. Just kidding. But um, <laughs> you know the drill. Leg day is not as intense as our upper body days, but we're still going to hit it. And the main thing of this video, though, is we're going to do some posing because we have with us a special guest, Josh Matali. What's up, brothers? How you uh, doing? <laughs> who, who is also known as the best poser on the team, for sure. He's definitely someone who has like taken the art of posing and just ran with it uh, very well rehearsed and practiced in the art of posing. So um, we're going to do some posing today and specifically we're going to give three tips on how to make your posing more advanced, uh, not basic like everyone else. So yeah, we're going to do that in a little bit. First we got to hit legs and then we're going to do some posing and not have an upper body pump for it. So it's going to be super raw and we're going to be small and all of the blood from our biceps will be in our quads so then we'll look extra small it's gonna be great All right guys, so it's no secret, posing is super important in bodybuilding, but not even in bodybuilding only, even just for like, I don't know, social media looking good on Instagram, whatever. Um, posing is like super hype right now, I wanna say. Probably honestly, because like Chris Bumstead, classic physique, stuff like that, it's just like really popping right now. So we're gonna talk about a few things that will enhance kind of like, make your posing look a little bit more advanced than just regular, I don't know, like beginner posing or stuff you see on Instagram, that's just kind of beginner. So we're gonna use Josh. As an example, Josh is like an incredible poser. He really is. Uh, you should check out his Instagram. We'll put his Instagram there. And like the routines and stuff he puts together is just epic. But we're gonna put him into just a front uh, pose for the men's physique. And I'm gonna, the first thing is really just like stacking your joints properly and making sure that your position is all correct. And it's so subtle, but if, if you have all those positions correctly, it just, it adds the perfect flow and completes the look. So I'm gonna explain. So Josh in his front pose, Hit that, boom. So there's a few things you're gonna notice it just looks good. But the question is why does it look good? What is it about it that looks good? So you're gonna notice a few things. Most of his weight is off on his lead leg right here. And he's got his joints, whoo, excuse me. <laughs> he's got his joints stacked. So you'll see his shoulder is over his hip, his hip is over his foot, his knees uh, aligned. We have this nice alignment right here. It doesn't have to be like perfectly straight, but they need to be stacked. If you were to just shift, kind of shift your weight 50 50 real quick, like it doesn't look good all of a sudden. Something's off about it, right? Now go back. When you stack that weight, 90% of the weight on that front leg suddenly completes the look. The next thing, 
is um, the hand placement. So his hand placement here on his hip is actually higher than his hand placement here. This hand is lower. And adding that height difference, again, makes a flow. If you were to raise his hand up, okay, now it looks weird. <laughs> he lowers it, and now it looks good, right? And the last thing about the positioning is his elbows are in what we call the frontal plane. So, um, yeah, you can come to the side. His elbow here is in the frontal plane, his other elbow's in the frontal plane. If he were to sag his elbow backwards a little bit, kind of like chicken wing it, now suddenly it's, it's off balance, it looks weird, it looks funky, it's not good. So just like that joint placement and the, the placement of like the height of certain joints and the stacking of the joints, it just like completes the look and it gives you an advanced posing look. Number two, this one a lot of people don't think about. Uh, it's big on stage, but it's even big just on Instagram too. It's your facial expression, okay? <laughs> so hit the front pose again and uh, smile like a freaking robot. Yeah, looks weird, man. Looks weird. But then if you notice, he could just stand there. He could have even the smirk. He doesn't have to smile. He could just have like a serious smirk on his face or something. And it's like kind of like there's an emotion to it, right? And this is big, if you're gonna be posting on Instagram, you're gonna be doing some classic poses or something, you don't wanna be like doing some like, I don't know, offset front of a bicep and be like, like, it's my uh, class picture, you know, but as soon as you're serious and you look off into the distance, boom, it's like you're creating emotion, you're adding stage presence or Instagram photo presence, whatever it is, it just adds to it. Okay, the next thing's gonna be foot placement, and I'm telling you, this is not like a small thing, so listen up, um, don't dismiss this one. So foot placement, again, we're just gonna do a front pose. And this is applicable for really any front pose, not just men's physique front pose, but even like classic front poses, stuff like that. You're gonna notice a couple things. So there's there's two things you can do, there's one thing that you should never do. If, if you drew a line right here, like on a stage, you'll notice, uh, you'll notice Josh's foot placement. His back leg is slightly forward to his, his lead leg. This is okay. You can also be, keep it completely even. You can also keep it completely even. What you should never do is have this one behind. And a lot of guys do this. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> but it completely just like opens up your hips and makes you look terrible. And then the other thing is they'll turn in their knee. And they're doing that because they're trying to twist their hip. But what happens is you end up turning your knee in and you look freaking terrible. So um, you can have the foot lined or in front and at all times, even if you're twisting your hips, okay, you need to have that knee pointing straight forward. So again, these are like the advanced things, you know, um, if I'm teaching a beginner, I'm just trying to get them in that front pose and look good, right? But as soon as we start to get more advanced, we're focused on like, okay, how are we looking with our face? You know, facial expressions, eye direction, where are we looking? Like, is our, you know, the positioning of the joints, are we stacking correctly? Where's our feet placement at? All those little things, like that's some more advanced stuff. Uh, and I mean, we could go on forever, but um, <laughs> that's basically three of the posing tips we want to give you guys today. And now we're just gonna do some free posing. Um, I'm gonna show you my current routine I'm messing with. Obviously, I'm not competing for almost another year, which is annoying, but I'll show you what the, the routine I'm messing with now, and then Josh, he'll do a routine too, just to kind of show you where we're at. In general though, your routine does not at any time need to be anything super crazy. Like, having a highly difficult routine isn't going to make the judges place you better. It's how well you can do the routine you're doing, even if it's really simple. So yeah, let's, uh, let's have some fun. Yeah. yeah, let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh, I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah, I just gotta go hard. Uh, I just gotta go hard. Go hard. Go hard. Yeah. Oh yeah, the beast back, adrenaline pumping through my veins, can't relax, original, I am not the same as these cats, I sting them if they never ever mind and they beeswax, I don't ever cap, but I'm wearing like three hats. Alright guys, thank you for watching the video, if you like this one, give it a like, and um, 
I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.